Um, I'm the second author, Tong Liang Liu, from the University of Technology, Sydney. Today I'm going to present the paper, Spectral Ensemble Clustering. This is a joint work of Hong Fu Liu, Bing Fu from Northeastern University, Jun Jie Wu from Beihang University, and Da Chen Tao from University of Technology, Sydney. We begin with the outline. First, we introduce some background. Then, we recall the co-association matrix-based methods for clustering. In the next, we detail our proposed spectral ensemble clustering method. Then, we discuss how to apply SEC, which is short for spectral ensemble clustering, to big data clustering. At last, we show the experimental results. What is ensemble clustering? Ensemble clustering is a well-known clustering strategy. It is also called the consensus clustering or cluster aggregation. It aims to find a single um, partition that most agree with the basic partitions. The problem is why we use ensemble clustering because the traditional single clustering has some defects, for example. Sometimes it is very hard to set parameters, for example, the number of centroids. Uh, fortunately, ensemble clustering method can overcome some of those defects. It can lower the risk of improper, improper parameters or exams. And moreover, it can output a consensus partition which is significantly better than all the basic partitions. Here we use this figure to illustrate the basic concept of ensemble clustering. Given a data set capital X and a set of basic partitions capital Pi, the ensemble clustering method will output a consensus clustering, which is Pi here, by exploiting some utility functions. The utility function measures the similarity between the final consensus uh, partition and uh, the basic partitions. That's why we can use the utility function to find uh, the final, final ones, which most agree with the basic ones. And here, uh, the example, uh, this utility function is where used for the ensemble clustering method. It is called the category utility function. According to whether explicit utility function used or not, or not, the ensemble clustering method can be roughly divided into two categories. The one with explicit utility functions, including k-means and uh, non-negative matrix factorization, and so on. And those without explicit utility functions are the graph-based algorithms, co-association matrix-based algorithms. And in this paper, we focus on the co-association matrix-based method. Now we introduce the co-association matrix-based method. We first introduce what is the co-association matrix-based method and then discuss some advantages and disadvantages. The co-association matrix-based method usually have two steps. The first step is to build a co-association matrix based on the basic partitions. The co-association matrix S measures how many times a pair of data appears in the same cluster. For example, the left-hand side table shows uh, some basic partitions for the data, and the right-hand side table is the corresponding co-association matrix. Here, the entry two means that the third and the fir first observations have been assigned to the same cluster twice. And the second step for the co-association matrix-based method is to employ a graph partition method to obtain the final consensus clustering. As we can see that, the co-association matrix can be regarded as a similarity matrix between data pairs then it has a dis uh, uh, it has an advantage that the consensus clustering problem can be defined as a classic graph partition problem, and, and so the graph partition method can be directly used for the co-association matrix. However, by doing so, 
there are also some disadvantages. For example, uh, the method has very high time and uh, space complexities. For example, the time complexity is big O of n cubed, and also the co-associated symmetric space method do not have explicit utility functions. Um, the problem is, can we overcome those problems? The answer is yes, and in this paper, we propose the spectral ensemble clustering method. Spectral ensemble clustering method directly use spectral clustering on the co-associated matrix to obtain the final consensus uh, clustering. Here is the objective function of uh, spectral ensemble clustering. We will call it SAC. Uh, we are the S is a co-association matrix, and uh, D is a diagonal matrix by summing the rows of S. It seems that at a first glance, the SAC suffers the same problem with the traditional co-association co matrix based method. For example, the high space and the time complexities and uh, do not have explicit utility function. Uh, then, if so, why we propose SAC? Fortunately, we can show that SAC can be solved very efficiently in an uh, elegant transform. We prove that SAC is theoretically equal to a weighted k-means problem, as shown in theorem one. Uh, here, the vector b of x is a binary vector built according to the basic partitions. And um, omega b of x is a weight, and k is a centroid. Note that the weight of an uh, instance is the sum of the size of clusters which it belongs to in the, car, uh, in the basic partitions. For example, if the instance X is an outlier of where data, the size, the size of the cluster it belongs to should be small. And uh, then the weight omega B of X should be small. This means our proposed sec should be robust. And uh, by doing so, we, we can obtain the solution for SAC by minimizing the weighted k-means problem. And uh, so the time and uh, space complexity can be decreased to, decreased to uh, both of the big O of N, which is much smaller than the before. And uh, by analyzing SAC in the viewpoint of, v, uh, of weighted k-means, we can show the intrinsic consensus utility function, as shown in theorem two. Here is a, a category utility function which is used uh, for the traditional ensemble clustering. We can see that uh, this term is independent of the final uh, consensus clustering pi, and uh, if uh, omega c k is equal to n k plus, the utility function of SAC will degenerate to the category utility function. This is an interesting result. And by theorem two, actually built a bridge between the co-association matrix space method and the other method, the other consensus method which use explicit utility function. It also shows that the similarity between instance level and uh, partitioning level can be interconvertible. As we have shown that SAC should be robust, and here we have analyzed the, the robustness and the generalization ability of SAC. Uh, it's mathematic and as shown in theorem three and four. Now we discuss uh, another very interesting uh, uh, case interesting case where the basic partitions are incomplete, which often happened because of distributed systems or missing data. The problem is how to apply SAC to the incomplete basic partitions. Note that the missing data will not provide any utility function in the ensemble process. 
In this way, we can modify the weighted k-means by using indicator function, and, and so we have derived the utility function of SAC with incomplete basic partitions, as shown in sample five. We can see here is a utility function of SAC. Those two utility functions are different because of this factor, PI. PI is defined as a ratio, actually. The ratio is between the number of instances used for the i's incomplete partition and the number of the overall instance. This means that our proposed method SAC will give more importance for the partition which have more elements. Now we discuss how to apply our proposed method to a big data clustering. At the first glance, ensemble clustering method is not suitable for big data because it needs basic partitions. When the data is extremely large, the basic partitions are usually not available. However, SAC with incomplete basic partitions make it possible for big data use. We can build the incomplete basic partitions by the a subset of the big data. And here we propose the row segmentation strategy to build the basic uh, incomplete pa partitions. It has two steps. First, we randomly select some instance and run k-means to label them from one to k. And the second step is to label the unsampled data by zero. By doing so, we can have one incomplete basic partitions. And we repeat these two steps, R times we can obtain R incomplete basic partitions. The row uh, segmentation strategy has some benefit. It can handle the big data separately and independently. But moreover, it can represent the high dimensional data by R dimensional vectors. Now we show our experimental result. Uh, the left-hand side figure summarizes the uh, characteristics of the data size we used. We, ha we have also used Rn to measure the validity of the different clustering method. Note that Rn is a positive measure, which means that a large value indicates a better performance. Also note that Rn is not always positive. Here we show the effectiveness and the efficiency of SEC. Table three shows that SEC um, outperforms the baselines on most of those data sets. And table four shows that the runtime of SEC uh, is much smaller than the baselines in most of those data sets. Some, uh, table four also empirically verified that SEC has a relatively low, uh, small, time complexity. We have also empirically shown that uh, SAC has good prob properties of st stability and uh, scalability. Now we show the results for big data. Almost uh, 100 million tweets was published on the platform of Weibo on the single day of September 1st, 2013, uh, 30, and after 13. After removing the advertisement, around 60 million instances left, and uh, they are of 10,000 dimensions. And we use row segmentation strategy to obtain 100 incomplete basic partitions, and use SAC to assemble them into 100 clusters. Some interesting results are uh, shown here. For example, cluster three show is about education. As we know that the autumn semester in mainland China begins on the day September the 1st. Here we come to the conclusion. In this paper, we propose a SAC and prove that it is equal equivalent to a uh, weighted k-means problem. And by optimizing the weighted k-means, the space and the time complexities can be dramatically decreased. And also we have show the utility function of SAC and have analyzed the, the robustness and the generalization ability of SAC and also discussed how to apply SAC to big data, relatively big data. Here is the uh, end. Thank you for your question.
Yeah, so we have time for a few questions. So, thank you. This total transmitting is very close to zero. What, what will happen? If the uh, uh, Cochrane's matrix is very close to zero, that means the partitions are pretty random, the base partitioning. What, what would be the impact on the ensemble? Uh, actually, if the most of the entries are zero, our, our method still works. It is more like the incomplete basic partition case. And in that case, most entries are zero. And the empirical results show that for this case, um, our method still works, but uh, you said uh, if the for social matrix have some zeros, what if their uh, impact uh, the compared with the, the four matrix uh, for that direction, we haven't do any further analysis. But I think it's uh, no make no big difference. I, I guess what I was asking is the initial base partitioning. If that oh, is yes. quite quite random, no. let's say for some reason, because I don't know what the similarity function is, and therefore ended up a crazy partitioning. Okay, actually, the basic partitions are obtained by running some quick k-means. We can set the prime the centralized number with different size and run different times to obtain the basic partitions, and in this way, uh, the co-associated matrix will not uh, vary randomly and it's um, have some good properties. Is, is that, are you satisfied with this? I guess the, the question is not the partitioning problem, but the notion of similarity. Oh. It's a catch-22. You would never know what the similarity function is, unfortunately. Uh, yes, yes, but uh, if, if give the you, um, co social matrix, no matter what uh, entries they are, but we can directly use our method to find the final con Consensus clustering. <laughs> okay, so other questions? Okay, so let's thank the speakers. So we will ask. Thank you.